Hi guys, welcome back. We've got a mad one today. So I've been collecting up some of the most lethal looking air rifle pellets I can get my hands on. So we've got nine different varieties here, plus the old faithful JSB exacts for some control groups. Now we're going to just check them today and see whether or not they're accurate. And going forward, I'm then going to test these into some ballistic gel to see whether or not they're actually as vicious as they look in real life. So we've got JSB Hades here. Now these are an incredibly popular pellet, especially in high powered air rifles. These are the original Predator Polymags. So again, a JSB made one assembled by Predator over in America. Now these are the Polymag shorts. These are a later version of them. These are incredibly popular for pest control in UK. These are the H&N branded ones. You can see that these are the H&N Red Scorpions. Now they look very similar to the JSB made Predator pellets. They've got a red ballistics tip in those. And these ones here are the H&N Hornets and they've got a mad brass tip. We've used them on the channel before. The two on the right here, these are called eco points or something along those lines. Interesting to try and be in as they're lead free, but I don't hold out much hope of those. They do look pretty cool though. So these ones at the top here, these are an unknown pellet from the late 80s, early 1990s. Now these have got a copper ball type tip to those. Be interesting to see how they run. They certainly look a little bit scabby, but of course they're quite old now. We've also got the Gamo Lethals. We've used these on the channel before, lead-free version. I'm really interested to see how these run into ballistics gel. So it's a little bit windy out there today. We'll keep the ranges short. I'm going to get them all shot and see whether or not they're actually accurate. And then going forward in the next week or two, hopefully I can run them off into some ballistics gel. So I'll see you at the farm. So these are standard lead JSB heavies, 10.3 grains. We should be somewhere near a zero. Right, so that's the heavies done, as per usual, nice tight little group, nothing out of the ordinary there. Right, so we're on to the Hades now then. I've never done particularly well with these at the extended ranges. However, they're incredibly popular with a lot of people that use them in FAC rifles in the higher powers. They seem to either love them or hate them, so we'll see how they go. They've certainly got a bit of a cult following. A lot of people use these for pest control as well. Hopefully the point of impact will be much the same, given they're essentially the same weight Oh, I can't get back that tin lid right, stay there. Well, okay, so that one felt much looser in the barrel to start with. That's interesting, it basically fell in there. Yeah, of course, with all of this stuff, some barrels are going to prefer different ammos. There's always that barrel dependency, of course. However, these feel very loose in the barrel, quite slack. And that group's slightly larger than the JSB Heavy. Wow, okay, that's not great really. No doubt if we ran a few more off, the groups may well tighten up slightly, but having spoken to a lot of people, that's the sort of results I was expecting with the Hades through this particular barrel. Now, as I've mentioned numerous times on the channel, every barrel is different, but generally speaking, in this sort of arrangement, this sort of barrel setup, the exact heavies are generally that bit better than the Hades are. So we'll leave that group as it is. We're gonna then move on to the Predators now. So the first of the ballistic tipped pellets, these are the original Predators, so these are the early ones, the full length ones. Let's see how they run. Well, that's a good start, the two of those of sort of clover leaf, they just one's nicked to the whole of the other. That actually feels really nice loading that into there. Nice gentle, little bit of friction going in, it feels quite nice and snug in there, it feels all right. Okay, so there's just a slight difference in the point of impact between these and the previous two pellets that we've shot. However, a couple of clicks on the scope and probably just a single click. That looks really nice and tight so far. And considering it's got a ballistic tip that's pressed in afterwards, you wouldn't necessarily expect that they would be accurate, but they certainly look to be so far. Now in an ideal world, you'd obviously run off much larger groups, spend a bit more time testing, but of course, we've used a lot of these already on the channel. We've tested lots of them before. We know how this barrel performs. But certainly these Predators, so these are the original ones, the long ones. These look far more accurate than I anticipated they would be. Oh, what? Hang on, we have another shot of that. I'm pretty sure that that wasn't me. <laughs> Literally just said that I thought they were going to be pretty good and then we get one that skews off. Got a few more in here. Let's just chuck a few more down range and see what happens. So the first few of those absolutely stacked on top of each other and now we've got a slight opening up of the group. OK, 
Okay, so they're probably just moving around in the barrel, then one's following the other. So again, I would expect that once you've spent a bit more time with these, run a few more through the barrel, they should be pretty good. Now, a lot of these ballistic tipped ones, they look a little bit gimmicky. However, again, these have got a very cult following with people, especially doing squirrel control and stuff like that. These seem to be a very popular pellet. So, right, we'll get the camera moved over. I'll show you the groups that we've shot so far, and then we're gonna move on to the h and Right then, so top left, this is our control group. Now each of these little tiny squares is just under five millimetres. So this red circle is about nine and a bit millimetres, just under a centimetre of that circle. So a lovely tight little group. The Hades, a little bit of movement there actually left to right. And the wind's sort of coming over the top of us. We haven't got a huge amount of wind. But strangely, the first of these predators all came into the right here. I was just sort of singing their praises and then the group started opening up. However, this one moved over, these ones followed it, so I'm sure that they would tighten up. Now, because they have got a ballistic tip that's pressed in, there is a chance that they aren't particularly stable downrange. Right, I've forgotten about the polymag shorts. We'll do those next. So these are essentially just a shorter version of the Predator. Again, another JSB-made pellet. These, hopefully, will be relatively accurate. Okay, so that immediately feels a little bit firmer into the barrel than the last lot did, so see how they run that certainly feels a bit nicer going into the barrel certainly more um friction than the hades the hades almost fell into the barrel now of course the way that i load this i'm thumbing them in i can feel them in to the same depth every time and of course you soon get the hang of telling which ones are tighter and looser right well that's literally gone through the same hole as the last one wow they look like they've got the tightest group so far. Wow, okay, that's the tightest group so far then. So the Predator Polymag Shorts, that looks to be about a six, seven mil group. So that's really quite tight. I'm really happy with those. The next one on the card is the H&N Red Hornet. Okay, so these look exactly the same really as a Polymag. Got a little red tip to them. Let's see how they run. Let's see whether or not these are as tight as the Polymag Shorts. No. Now the Anschutz is they do tend to prefer a slightly looser fitting pellet. Well, well that's gone through the same hole as the last one, but the problem being is that if there's a little bit of um Yeah see that one felt a bit looser. Oh, okay, so we've got two distinct impact points there. That one's really tight going in there, so I wonder if that will go up a bit high like the others have. And that one's skewed way off. It's not surprising when they're that tight to get into this barrel, so. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Okay, so the Red Scorpion's not so great in this barrel setup. I don't think they're gonna tighten up. You can feel that there's a reasonable difference in the actual size of the heads on those. Right, so we're on to the H&N Hornets now then. Now these are a beautiful looking pellet with the pointy tips on these. You've got a metal tip. It looks like it's probably brass or something like that. They really do look pretty lethal. Now we have used them before on the channel. So much the same as the Red Hornets, or the Red Scorpions, should I say, they're pretty tight into the barrel. So it doesn't necessarily look like a good start, but let's see what happens downrange. The tips on these are so sharp, it's incredible. They do really look like a lethal bit of kit. Nice. You certainly get the impression with these um, Hornets that they are well put together. When I've been playing with them, having a little wiggle of them in my hands, the tips look very concentrically pressed into the main body of the pellet itself. And so far, the ones we've wedged into the barrel, they actually feel pretty good. I'll move the little tiny bit. Oh, that's a shame. They started moving up a little bit. That's a bit annoying. Right, the next one we're going to do, then we're going to have a quick look at that card, and then we're going to move on to the unknown copper ball type ones. Now, I think that they're a pellet from the 1990s, but they certainly look pretty lethal. We'll give them a bust, and then we'll go on to the plastic ones. Right then, Polymag Shorts. That's interesting because they've actually given a much cleaner punch in that paper, probably the tightest group. Well, actually, it definitely looks like the tightest groups. The two H&Ns, not quite as tight. Now, they didn't feel particularly nice into that barrel. They are that little bit harder. Certainly being that harder and how hard you have to wedge them in, there's obviously some misalignment going on in there. So probably not well suited to that barrel. Then we're going to go on to the weird copper ball ones, then the lethals. Then we'll swap the card over and try these other weird plastic jobs. 
right behind that great bit of four by two is the GoPro. I don't know how much I trust these copper ball ones. The lethals are definitely a bit sketchy, and I'm sure that these plastic ones we may even struggle to hit the A4 paper. So, going to keep the GoPro on, but it's now hiding behind that bit of four by two just to keep it safe. Right then, so the unknown copper looking ball tipped jobs. Now, as I've said, these are potentially from the late 80s and early 90s. All that basically just fell into the barrel. Right, I'm glad I put that bit of wood behind the, um, or in front of the GoPro. Well, this one feels really tight. <laughs> okay, that's skewed off to the left a couple of inches. Now that one's literally fell in the barrel again. Okay, so that's gone two inches to the right, if not a little bit more. These can probably stay in the 80s, I think. Right, that one actually fell fairly smooth to load. So we had the first one felt all right, the second and third ones felt really slack. This one didn't feel too bad. Useless. Another one that looks like it's going to skew right off. Wow. Two of them are almost near each other and the other three are all over the place. Right, they can stay in the 80s, we don't want to see them again. Let's go on to the old Game Lethals. Horrifically expensive. They foul your barrel up. Three, four, five. But they do look pretty cool. They do feel nice loading into the barrel because they've got that polymer or plastic skirt. They do actually feel all right loading. So let's give them a whirl, shall we? Well, it's in the square. Okay, that's not too bad. I can't remember what barrel we used for these last time, but they were all over the place, especially at range. They just skewed off quite wildly and quite dangerously. Still don't like the fact that they're plastic mined, but we are collecting these now. They're into the pellet trap, so I can dispose of them down the line. But so far, not too bad. Oh, that one's skewed off. I vaguely remember from the last time that we shot these that the first few went through all right whilst there was some lead in the barrel. And then they seemed to start fouling the barrel up. And I remember we pulled the barrel through. It was almost like cat fluff was coming out of it. Okay, same as last time then. I think it may well have been the Anschutz barrel that we used last time, but that one skewed off and up. Now, I bet you any money that the barrel started to foul with the remnants of the skirt. So what I'm going to do is um, swap the card over. We're going to put just some fresh cards out with a single cross in the middle of them. We'll try these other weird plastic ones. Right then guys, we're onto these little plastic peg things. I've just chucked them in. We're gonna start with the orangey ones. Now, they've got a slightly pointed tip. I'm sure I've seen these before. I think it's almost as if they're something that holds in like drawer runners or something like that in kitchen. So, okay, that actually loaded quite smoothly into there. Definitely don't try this at home guys, especially if you've got fancy barrels. So we've just got an old card down there. I'm not wasting a decent card on these. So I'm just gonna aim for the top cross whether or not we actually even hit the card. Oh, okay. So that one's gone straight down the center line, a bit high, as you'd imagine. These are something like three and a half grains. So they basically weigh nothing, but it has actually gone into the target. Be interesting to look in the actual backstop, see if they've actually stuck into the lead. Not so much a group as a galaxy, that lot. Right, let's try these green ones then. How oh, funny. They almost follow exactly the same um, grouping patterns as the last ones, the little um, orange ones. Right, last one then. I don't think that these are going to go into the ballistics gel. I don't think there'll be too much to look at, and I think they're going to be a little bit too wayward to be safe. Well, not great, certainly a bit better the green ones than the orange ones are. Um, let's go and have a quick look at that. Right, there we go then. We've got probably four and a half, nearly five inches up the top there. The green ones weren't quite so bad. We've probably got just under three inches, more like two and a half inches of spread on those. These were just some old ones from the old card that I was reusing, but interesting. It'd be interesting to pull that barrel through before we do any further testing with it and see whether or not they've actually fouled it up. But I definitely don't think it's going to be safe to try and run these ones into the ballistics gel. I want to do each individual pellet into its own little block, so I need to make sure that they're safe enough to actually go into that. Well, that's pretty interesting. You can see here with the old um, lethals, they're basically reusable. They've penetrated into the lead, but I've just picked those out and they could actually run back through. These plastic ones are destroyed. They won't go back through. 
up top here, Polymag Shorts, you can actually see where the tip or the back edge of that tip is turned completely inside out, but a lovely tight little group. I think they're definitely the surprising one. They grouped actually better than the JSB heavies, so we definitely need to do some more with those. So I'll see you back at home. Right then guys, we're back. That was fun. It's nice to try a few of these unusual things now. Certainly some of these look a bit more gimmicky. The JSB heavies, we know that they can do slightly tighter groups than that. I probably pulled this lower one, but in any case, that gave us our baseline. Now the Hades, this particular batch of Hades was not a good fit in the barrel. They were quite undersized for what I'd need really, which is unusual. Generally speaking, most of the JSB stuff fits that Anschutz barrel particularly well, but considering how loose a fit they were in the barrel, I'm glad we even got a group as good as this, to be honest. I know a lot of people use these very successfully. Generally, just typical JSB, really well put together. That and the heavies, they're the same weight, much the same overall profile, apart from these have got the little radiation symbol in the head of them. So overall, I would have liked slightly better, but considering how poor a fit they were, to be expected, really. These were the original Predators, so... Again, the groups of these slightly larger than I would have liked. Now, the groups were moving around in the barrel a little bit. I'm sure had we run a few more through, we could have done the slightly tighter groups. Now, of course, we're a bit limited to the amount of these we've got as we've only sort of got tester tins. So overall, again, I'm quite happy that they would be humane for pest control. Now, the best of the bunch and what really did surprise me were the Polymag shorts. Now, I was told that these were incredibly accurate. And sure enough, these shorter pellets, as with the JSB Exact shorts, they shoot really well in the Anschutz barrel. That was by far and away the tightest group of the day. They felt the nicest loading into barrel, nice consistent sizing, decent fit in the barrel, nice accurate group. So yeah, really good. I'm really looking forward to seeing what these do in the ballistics gel. I mislabeled the card. So these were the red scorpions, the H&Ns. Now from going from the JSBs onto the H&Ns, I actually shot off a few FTTs just to get a bit of the harder lead alloy from the H&Ns into the barrel. The groups were still fairly scattered with the scorpions. Now unusually... For H and N, these were actually pretty poor in terms of the sizing. Some were looser than others, so they would definitely need sorting into sizes if you wanted to use those. My favourite looking ones are by far and away these Hornets. They look absolutely mental. They've got a really sharp brass tip to them. Reasonably tight groups, considering generally I'll always do better with a sort of dome-headed pellet, but. Absolutely mad looking things. Pretty tight groups. Again, these are going to be a really interesting one to get into the ballistics gel. Copper ball ones, useless, all over the place. They can stay back in the 80s and 90s. We will reuse these into the ballistics gel. It'll be interesting to see what they do, whether they expand, whether the balls come out or anything like that, whether they really do open up and cause big wound cavity. The leaf balls, we've used these before. I'm not really a fan of these. They are lead-free. I'm not a fan of the plastic. They do feel beautiful loading, actually. And on the day, not too bad a group. But I certainly wouldn't want to use these for pest control. Then plastic peg things, terrible. I don't think we're going to use those into ballistics gel. They're not going to break apart or anything like that. They're not going to expand or anything fun. So as soon as I can get time to get everything into the ballistics gel, it's going to be quite an undertaking for me on my own. So I might have to get someone to give me a hand on the camera. But as soon as I can get these into ballistics gel, now we have a baseline. We'll be able to see what sort of impacts they make, what sort of damage they make to the gel. So it's certainly going to be interesting. So that do it for this one, guys. I'll see you in the next one.